Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and what is going on with the TVA in Deadpool and Wolverine? And will its God grace us with his presence this summer? Let's break down what new version of the Time Variance Authority we are seeing in this third Deadpool movie, because it's a big deal to have the most important location to come out of the Disney Plus side of Marvel now show up in what is probably going to be Marvel's biggest movie since Avengers Endgame, and let's see how likely it's going to be that Wolverine will have to break out of this prison, painting the halls of the TVA red with the blood of Minutemen as prisoner 24601 leaves no witnesses. Hey, I really appreciate you watching this video, and other than watching, liking, and subscribing, the best way to support us is to grab something like this Deadpool and Wolverine face-off shirt from our merch store, nerdriot.shop. Thanks to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. More about them in a minute. Okay, in Deadpool and Wolverine, Wade Wilson will be brought in by the Time Variance Authority, the agency that we saw in the Loki series, and as we learn in the Loki finale, it's no longer an agency overseen by Kang Variant. He remains tasked with pruning variant timelines, or rather one over seen by God of Stories Loki, nurturing a multiverse of timelines to grow like an Eat Your Still time tree. But this is not exactly the same TVA unit and uniform that we saw throughout the Loki series. In Loki, hunters like B-15 and D-90 wear black armor with helmets, shoulder pads, bracers, knee pads, and a chest plate atop burnt orange and black harlequin jumpsuits. Their pant legs are stamped with the vertical orange letters of TVA, which also appear on the arm sleeves. Their chest plates are all one piece with a black stamped TVA indent Beneath their chest plate is an often colored lapel, and B-15 wears an orange necktie. The straps holding their chest plates normally have their alphanumeric designation, which is also stamped on their helmets. But in Deadpool and Wolverine, the TVA unit that takes in Wade Wilson and the Minutemen we see him fighting in the woods later in the trailer and the one who gets snatched by Eliath in the void have uniforms inspired by the Loki costume design, but with noticeable changes. Their chest plates are more segmented. They have an orange TVA logo on the top center of their chest plates. Above this little orange circle right in the middle. Right? Why is that there? Is that like a plug? Like a matrix plug? But also you'll notice behind the front man of this unit there are three more who have masks and orange visors like SWAT helmets and riot gear. Also notice that their helmets do not have any hunter codes, just an orange TVA logo and orange stripes. And lastly the fabric on their jumpsuits beneath their armor is a more vibrant orange than the burnt orange of the TVA. It's more of a traffic cone color of orange. You know like we saw the TVA logo on the Loki version of the uniforms. In a detail I just noticed, when you look closely at this orange fabric, like the shot of the primary Miniman Hunter drawing his pruning stick, the pant fabric is patterned with interlocking triangle shapes, which I believe are the letters T, V, and A layered over each other. It's almost like they made orange camo out of these letters. Like this could be a type of temporal camouflage as these agents go in and out of time doors without wanting to be noticed by people who can see those time doors. I think it's safe to say that we are looking at an even more militaristic special forces unit of the TVA than what B-15 represented. They don't wear neckties like the TVA hunters who might have to take an elevator up to the legal level to testify in the courtroom before a judge. No, they wear camo and masks with visors to protect them from the outside world. And they do not display their numerical IDs. They're like cops who don't want you to know their badge numbers. What does that tell you? I believe we're looking at a part of the TVA that is more off the books. Some have pointed out that when Wade Wilson is taken, he is grabbed from behind and pulled through a time door, while the primary Minuteman, whose face we do see, pulls his hairpiece off as if he's trying to pull Wade forward to keep him from being pulled back through the door. I really just view this as more of a sneak attack maneuver, and the main guy is kind of just like, and take this stupid toupee off. No disguises. But I do think that this part of the TVA, commanded by Paradox, is not the primary part of the TVA with B-15 that we saw at the end of Loki Season 2. I believe Paradox leads a special department. Like, imagine an internal affairs, or just like a special task force with a different agenda, with a special security clearance that the rest of the TVA does not have. A department that specializes in tracking down glitches, aka Nexus Beings. I believe that this department is so specialized and so essential to the TVA that B-15 and OB and Mobius and the rest do not even know about it. And this division of the TVA survives any change of power. Their function remains the same. A department that God of Stories Loki might not even know about. A department secretly backdoored into the TVA by someone else. Beyond any Kang variant or successor by the Watcher or by Kevin or by some governing body that both of them are a part of. Now Tom Hiddleston appeared at Comfest Con and he was asked if Loki was going to appear in Deadpool and Wolverine. Culture Crave shared his response. I don't know. And if I did, I might not be allowed to tell you. Uh, fair enough. 
I, I, don't, I truly don't know. Marvel are correctly very protective of their information. I've seen the trailer. Looks good. So Loki is now god of stories in the MCU. He is currently holding all strands of time together to try to keep things as a balanced multiverse. But even gods can have blind spots. While Loki in the final shot of that series seemed to be looking directly into camera, I don't know if that qualifies as Loki himself being a Nexus being. Nor would Kang or he remains being Nexus beings. Because their glances into camera don't seem to be as intentional as it has been with Deadpool, Wanda Maximoff, or She-Hulk, or even The Watcher. And Loki and Kang have not really spoken directly to the viewer. And just again to clarify this distinction, I don't think Agatha or Vision count in this regard, despite talking to camera in WandaVision episode 7 in the interview segments, because those Talking Heads interviews were part of Wanda's sitcom-themed text, and they were just kind of playing along with that. Their pocket reality in that moment was shifted in such a way so that they behaved as if they existed in the sitcom reality, where interviews to camera sometimes happen in the modern age. If anything, when they spoke to camera, that was really Wanda speaking to camera. And in WandaVision, the camera was a broadcast signal viewable by characters within the broader MCU, as we saw Darcy Lewis and Sword watching this signal on TV, on television sets, outside the hex, but still within the main MCU reality. If you've ever signed up for a streaming service for just one month so you could binge a show, then you know the particular pang of guilt when you see the charge pop up on your credit card bill months after the fact. If you're tired of making that mistake, try Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage your money better. Rocket Money subscription cancellation feature is my favorite, hands down. Rocket Money can safely and securely identify recurring charges and cancel unwanted subscriptions for you. On average, Rocket Money customers save over $700 a year. This is key for me. Rocket Money even lets you skip calling customer service by letting you cancel in the app just with a few taps. Rocket Money also has tools to help you manage your savings, negotiate bills, and easily set up a budget for your spending. Once you're signed up for free, you can unlock even more features with premium. It's so easy to use that there's no reason not to take control of your finances. To save more and spend less, join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash new rockstars or click the link in the description to get started for free. So let's talk about Paradox and who he really is. Played by Matthew McFadden in this film, Mr. Paradox appears in only one issue of Marvel Comics, Dan Slott's She-Hulk number 3 in 2005, as a judge presiding over the trial of She-Hulk alongside Mr. Ouroboros and a number of other judges. They're judging She-Hulk for warning Hawkeye of his impending death, but Mr. Paradox dies in this issue when he's hit by a blast from the retro cannon by the villain Clockwise. I think Paradox in this movie is going to have a lot more to his function in the TVA than the comics version did, and really they just pulled the name. In the trailer, Paradox snaps his fingers and what sounds like the Disney Plus logo click. <laughs> And he tells Wade Wilson this. You are special. This is your chance to be a hero among heroes. Paradox shows Wade a video wall of scenes from the MCU past, but using the editing and framing of the cameras that the Russo brothers used and that Joss Whedon used. They are watching it the way we watched it. And on top of that, another screen shows Ryan Reynolds' Emmy acceptance speech for Welcome to Wrexham. Now, in the version of the TVA where B-15 and Mobius work, they have an old school film projector reel footage showing scenes from the MCU, but they don't have this fancy wall of video screens, and they definitely don't have footage of things that happen in our world. This must be technology that Paradox would have had to get from the Kevin robot. Kevin, knowledge enhanced visual interconnectivity nexus. The MCU's representation of Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige himself. The Kevin robot lives deep in the Marvel vault on Disney's Burbank studio lot with a ball cap shaped piece over his eyes. While within the MCU, the TVA is normally tasked with monitoring timelines, the Paradox department is a special task force installed by Kevin to operate outside the oversight of B-15 or even Goddess Stories Loki to try to register and control all Nexus glitches, like Deadpool and She-Hulk. The TVA hunters and Minutemen who report to this division are masked and anonymous because they do not want Deadpool to use their identities against them, because any information those glitch fugitives get on them can be used to awaken them, to open their eyes, to see the cinematic reality that they see, to be able to break past the fourth wall. Masking their identities is a security measure to keep them from being able to break the fourth wall like Deadpool can. And Paradox snaps like the Disney Plus fanfare because he is a special Nexus paradoxical creation that is immune to this meta contagion, and he is also aware that all of this really exists within a prison reality of a streaming platform called Disney Plus. But I think the Paradox Department being a separate entity within the TVA might also explain why the void we see in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer looks different. Instead of the grassy rolling hills with natural flora and fauna, we seem to be in a deeper circle of hell with no atmosphere even. Everything is covered in a layer of dust, and pruned items from different cinematic realities are lying about. 
out. This is the Isle of Paradoxes, the 20th Century Fox logo, maybe even Jeff Loveness's Avengers King Dynasty script, according to his I'll See You in Hell Twitter bio. While it's part of the TVA void, I think this could be where you go after Eliath eats you. Unlike Mobius's ability to come back from the main void, there truly would be no coming back from this, unless a Nexus Bean brings you back, unless Deadpool saves you. And that's why I think Deadpool is down here. This is a classic mythological journey through hell, like Orpheus and Eurydice, in which Deadpool rescues his long lost love of Wolverine, the real Wolverine from hell. My hope for this movie's climax is for Deadpool and Wolverine to finally break the surface in this inner division of the TVA and stage a massive prison break, and for Wolverine to be designated as Prisoner 24601, because that is how Deadpool labeled him on his crayon map in Deadpool 2, and in 2016's Deadpool, with his wrench shirt and his Bernadette Peters pouch, Deadpool is totally a musical theater nerd, and I think we are just destined to see Prisoner 24601 snicked his way through the halls of the TVA the way Wolverine has slashed his way out of Alkali Lake. So if God of Stories Loki makes it into Deadpool and Wolverine, I think it would just be at the very end, as he like just smiles from his throne and gives all of this his blessing. But otherwise, I think this is all going to be going down in a part of the TVA that even he doesn't see. Actually, we recently broke down the 2016 Deadpool film for all the details you never caught and what could come back for Deadpool and Wolverine. Go watch that video and subscribe for all of the installments of our X-Men Snicked Snicked Rewatch. I'm Eric Voss. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.